Welcome to episode three of season two of Agricola Card of the Week, where I hope to pique your interest in some of the more unusual cards and combos, rekindle your interest in the game, and make you aware of some strategies and pitfalls for the next time you play. For the remainder of this series, I'm going to be looking at the uh, major card deck expansions, uh, which I own. Uh, there are other sort of novelty and smaller decks which are available, but sort of these are the four big ones. Uh, today we're looking at the first of those, the World Championship deck. The World Championship deck strikes a nice balance between sort of utilitarianism and kind of novelty. It's not as novel as, say, the Belgium deck or the Netherlands deck, but it's a little bit more interesting than the Gamers deck, which we will discuss next week. Uh, it contains some nice cards in the vein of the original deck, but just a little bit more spiced up. Uh, with these episodes, I'm going to be looking at four uh, occupations and four improvements from each of the decks. So starting with today's deck, uh, we're going to look at four occupations. Proudly sponsored by Yeoman. Available in the App Store now. Four occupations we're looking at today, I've actually used every single one of them. The first of those is the contractor. Uh, you can pay a food to replace any building resource whenever you're building a major improvement or renovating or building a room. So you, you basically, your major building exercises, you can replace one of those resources that you need with a food. Uh, obviously you need to, you know, have a good source of food going or maybe go fishing or whatnot. Uh, it's flexible because it allows you to do some things that you might otherwise struggle to get resources for. A nice utilitarian card. The beekeeper. Uh, when you play this card, you put one of your unused stables on a space on its side. You don't have to pay to build it. It's not really a stable. What it actually is, is a, a beehive. Um, you, it's still worth a point at the end of the game as a fence stable. So, you know, that's one thing. And obviously you have to have an unused stable. Every harvest, you get a food from that beehive. So basically you're producing honey. Uh, a nice utilitarian card to get on the go early. I do like this one. The Hoarder. The Hoarder is just a card for getting extra points. Uh, each harvest you can put a building resource on that card. Uh, you get one point for each real resource that you have on that card at the end of the game. You get a bonus point if you get all four, so it's worth up to five points. I almost pulled it off. I had three resources on there. You have to get it out uh, when, with at least four harvests to go. You can't just put a resource on there at any time, and you do have to have that resource to put on there. I was right near the end of the game. I had that one resource to put on there and I just needed it for something else. Um, but still, it was fun trying to pull it off and a nice little extra way of getting some points. And the last of the occupations for this deck uh, is the crop rotator. Uh, whenever you move, remove the last vegetable or grain from any field, you can immediately sow that field with the opposite. So if you just took the last grain off a field, you can put a, immediately sow a vegetable on it. If you take the last vegetable off a field, you can immediately sow a grain on there. Um, just a handy way of getting extra sowing actions, and I have used this. It was not quite as powerful as I had at first hoped it would be, and obviously you've got to have the, the opposite resource to sow on there, but um, if you're wanting to do a crop-based crop strategy, uh, an excellent card. Moving on to the minor improvements, uh, the Honeymoon. Uh, it is worth five points, uh, so it's all about points. You can place two fewer members in the final round. So sometimes you're getting towards the end of that game, you may be thinking, oh, there's not very much I can do left in the game to get more points. Uh, it doesn't often happen, but it can happen that you're getting towards the end and there's not much less else to do. Or you might just think that five points is five points. You have to play it in round three or earlier. You can't play it in round 14 and decide to just do it then. Uh, but I have used this, and I have actually used this in combination with another card that gave me points towards the end of the game for not taking actions in the last round as well. So there, there is a couple of combos out there uh, if you just happen to be lucky enough to have them come up. I didn't win, though. The apple tree costs your wood, uh, but then you essentially put that wood on a field, uh, so just as you would sow a grain or whatever. You're not sowing the wood, you're essentially planting an apple tree. Uh, it gives you one food every harvest. Um, I like it. It's just a novelty. It's, I see that little wood on my field and I sort of imagine that that's my little apple tree. If I had the, the time, I might even make myself a little apple tree just for the odd occasion when this card comes out. Uh, basic card. It's also worth a point. That's handy and obviously you have to have a field to sow it on. A nice, simple, utilitarian card. 
the reed nursery. Uh, it allows you to sow reed as you would uh, grain. So you sow one reed and put two other reed on top and then harvest those. Uh, it also gives you bonuses at the end of the game based on how many, how much reed you have. So just as you get bonus points, up to four bonus points of having up to eight grain, you get up to four bonus points for having up to eight reed. I did play this card once, I did have this big plan in my head that I was going to get lots and lots of read and I was going to go for those eight bonus points, sorry, four bonus points. Uh, it didn't work out that way, but it was still a very handy card to have and it gave me those opportunities to renovate and build extra rooms along the way. And finally for the World Championship deck, the Ram. It costs you a sheep, so essentially you're kind of converting one of your sheep into this sheep. Uh, it's worth a point. You have to feed it with each harvest, but your sheep breed after rounds 6, 8, 10 and 12. So it's potentially four extra breeding phases for your sheep. Uh, so certainly, provided you've got a way of turning sheep into food, which you should, um, then you can, you know, you certainly got, it's going to pay for itself. Just a way of getting extra quicker sheep to breed. A nice little basic simple card that just lets you tweak those rules that little bit in your favour. Thank you for watching episode 3 of season 2 of Agricola Card of the Week. Coming up next episode, the Gamers deck, uh, similar in flavour to this, maybe a little bit more generic, but nonetheless uh, quite a handy deck if you can manage to track down a copy. Uh, if you run iOS, uh, consider buying my app Yeoman to make it easy for you or anybody who's maybe new to the game to score their game. We use it every time we play. Uh, please like or leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel. Farmers of the Moor makes the game different in several ways. One is that your farm is a little bit different every time. Pombo's Wheel with other cards uh, might just give you those resources you need to do something else. Uh, typical of this deck. Proudly sponsored by Yeoman. Available in the App Store now.